let's look at this problem of when you have a conservative field, can you find the potential if you are given the field? So let me put you in context. So you remember that in a conservative field, the field is the minus gradient of a potential scalar field, yeah? And we already did a problem in which I gave you the potential scalar field and I asked you to calculate the vector field. And that was very easy because you just have to apply the gradient. But now my question is, can you do the opposite? So if I give you a vector field f, can you find the potential? So what is your intuitive answer? So let me give you some reasoning. So you remember that I was saying that this equation was like the vector field really contains the information equivalent to three scalar fields, right? f of x as a function of r, f of y as a function of r, and f of z as a function of r. While the, the scalar potential is a single scalar field. So it seems like this should have three times as much information as this. And yet it doesn't, because this field is a conservative field, which means that you can obtain these three uh, scalar fields all from the single scalar field of the potential. So this is like a compressed version of this. So it's like you are economizing information. So you, in, in, a, in fewer mathematical equations, you are giving the same amount of information as in the field, right? So you could think of this, I don't know if you, if you are aware of compressing computer files, such as a zip file or a rar file or a whatever, yeah? So you could imagine this is the uncompressed file and this is the compressed file. So in order to uncompress it, you unzip it, which means that you do the minus gradient and you get the three, the three scalar fields corresponding to each component. And that's very easy. But doing it the other way around, starting with the uncompressed file and compressing it, you need to know how to do that, right? There must be some algorithm to compress it back. You could also think as when you are unboxing some something that is very packly, very tightly packed, such as, I don't know, one of these um, sleeping bags or things like that when you go camping. So it's all, it all comes in a very small box. Then you open it, you expand the sleeping bag or you build a tent. And then when it comes time to packing it back again into the box, that's much more difficult, right? So this is similar. So the problem of finding the potential given the field is a bit more difficult, but it's, it's, it's not impossible. And I'm going to show you how to do it in general. So that given any vector field, you will be able to find the associated potential. Okay. Only one small comment. And is that there is one thing that we will never be able to find if we are given the field and that's any constant that is added to the potential. Why is this? This is because imagine that you have two potentials. So potentials have a degree of freedom, add a constant. So imagine you have two potentials. One is the potential A. Let me call it potential one because I'm going to use potential A later, potential one. Okay, and the other is potential two. And potential two is equal to potential one plus a constant. So now if you calculate the field of potential one, so you calculate field one as the minus gradient of the potential one, okay? And you find a field. But now we calculate the field two. So field two is the minus gradient of the potential two. But this is equal to the minus gradient of the potential one plus a constant which now you can apply linearity of the gradient. So this is the minus gradient of the potential one minus the gradient of a constant. And the gradient of a constant is zero. Okay, so therefore you end up with minus the gradient of potential one, which is equal to F1. Okay, in other words, even though the potentials are different because they differ by a constant, the fields are the same, F2 equals F1. Okay? This is related to the fact that, the, for example, the potential energy, you can always define 
what zero means, right? You can always add a constant to the potential energy everywhere in the universe and the results, the physical results are the same. The gravitational fields and the gravitational forces will always be the same. So the potential has this degree of freedom, which is to add or subtract a constant. And this means that whenever we try to find the potential from a field, we will always be able to add an unknown constant, okay? So that's just a note I wanted to do, to say. Okay, so having said that, let's see how to calculate the potential if you are given the field. So the way to do it is to apply the property of um, conservative fields. So you know that conservative fields have the property of the line integral, the line integral between a and b of f dot dr is equal to the potential at a minus the potential at b. Right? You remember this property. So then what if I use A as the origin and I use B as an arbitrary point X, Y, Z. Okay? And when I say A as the origin, it can be any other point. It can be a reference point or any reference point. So what happens then? Then when we do the integral of the field between A and B on any path, the result would be the potential at A, which is our reference point, and this represents this arbitrary constant, arbitrary constant, the potential at reference point. So in the problems I'm going to do next, this will be the origin. But for example, if you are considering the potential for a gravitational field, you cannot do it at the origin because at the origin, the potential goes to infinity or to minus infinity. So then normally for gravitational fields, we take the reference point A as a point at infinity. Okay? So that's our reference point, And this is just a constant, the potential at the reference point, minus the potential at B, which means the potential at X, Y, Z. But if x, y, z is any point we want, that's it. That's a way to find the potential at any point because we can just do that the potential at x, y, z, which is basically what we wanted, the potential at a point r, is given by, we just have to bring this positive to the other side and bring this as negative. So this is equal to a constant, which is the reference, minus the integral from a to b of f dot dr. So we can do this to calculate the potential at any point. Okay? In other words, to find the potential at any point, we know it will be some constant minus a line integral that we will have to do. But if we have the field, then we can choose any line integral between A and B. So normally, to make our lives easier, we try to, to choose this line integral in a smart way. So, for example, if we are if we are finding the, poten the gravitational potential from the gravitational field, we would choose a radial path that goes from infinity to your point, but following the radius, so a radial path. Because the, because the gravitational field is pointing in the radial direction, so that would make the dot product easiest. In general, though, if f is some arbitrary function with an x-hat, a y-hat, and a z-hat component that seem rather unrelated, normally the easiest way to do it, and that's the way I'm going to do it in the problems that I'm going to show you, is to choose a path which looks like this. We start from the origin, which is our reference point A. Then we move to our desired point x along the x-axis, but keeping x and keeping y and z constant. Then we move to the desired point y. So this corresponds to y, but keeping x and z constant. And then we move to the in this z direction to the desired value of z. So this is z. Okay, so we arrive at the point x, y, z. 
and during this path you know that x and y are constant okay so that's the typical path that we can choose and remember you can choose any path that you want and the result will always be the same so you don't have to worry about the path i'm just saying that this path usually results in the fastest way to calculate the potential given the field okay so let's do an example for that see you in the next video